What's up and welcome. We are en route to our first job today. We are doing a service on a generator, so I was going to do a walkthrough and kind of give you the ins and outs of the generator, kind of a 101. Today's episode 13 and it's Friday. I don't know what that means, but I like it. So let's get there. Check this area out. It's really cool. It's Bel Air. These houses are amazing. Let's see if you can see this. Zoom in. Look at this house. It's another one of our customers too, funny enough. The neighbor's house. I don't know how well you can see that. Pretty awesome. Anyway. We're working on this. Alright, so this Fisher Panda 7.5 kilowatt. Very good generator, probably one of the best on the market. This motor is actually six years old now, still running strong. These are very good engines. Kubota built the 11 horsepower diesel here, and they use a closed cooling system, which is very good for water being cooled to your heat exchanger here. All right, so something you should remember, if this thing does not start, you shouldn't crank it more than about five times trying to start it because it'll suck water into the exhaust because it's pumping water the whole time. Or if it ain't starting, you can close your valve here and try to get it running. But if you put too much water in there, you're gonna get it in the cylinders and you're gonna hydro lock it. I've rebuilt four or five of these because of that issue. People just cranking and cranking and cranking thinking it's gonna start and eventually it locks up. So please don't do that. All right, another important thing here, back it up some, our water pump needs to be pulled off and resealed every year at least because if you look back here right in this area these seals have a tendency to leak water out of them and you only get water all over the side of this motor and in this case it would be salt water which is not a good thing it'll start to corrode I've seen them where the whole side of this motor up here had to be cleaned and some things replaced and everything else so make sure that these get serviced the right way every year all right, so let me show you how this all works real quick. We have our generator pickup, a strainer that you wanna check just about every time you use a generator. You wanna make sure this thing's always clean because good water flow is very important. There's a fuel filter, a fuel water separator. It's very important also. Right in line with your fuel filter here is your fuel pump. It pulls after the fuel filter so the fuel pump gets clean fuel. This sometimes fails, very rare, but these make a lot of noise also. If they stop making noise, you know they're failed. So you run in, this is a diesel, so it has a return line that goes to the fuel tank right here. You have in and out, it's not a closed fuel system, it's a looped fuel system. All right, you see back here, oil filters back here. Of course, always in a spot where you can't hardly get to it. And this one is an older generation one, but it's in really good shape because if you take care of these, they seem to run for a long time. This is an old computer. This is a little bit different now, but it's pretty much the same, basically the same thing, just a little updated. And this one's actually been updated. There's a sticker in here that I've put on. And right on top here, this is your fuel cutoff. This stops your fuel. You shut the generator off, cut the fuel supply. That's the most how all diesels work. Cutting fuel supplies, how you kill them. Yeah, throttle alarm here that controls your throttle depending on the load of the engine it varies the throttle they run around 3500 rpms normally on the side here you got a little air filter it's kind of like a sponge it really just catches debris heavy stuff from going in there you clean them or you change them that one still looks good it takes a long time for them to get dirty Inside this box right here, it's probably a good idea unless you're certified to not touch stuff in there. Because that is actually your power to in the boat. That's your AC power and AC power is not a fun one to uh, get shocked by. All right, back here you have four capacitors. You have two up here. Four of them always work. The other two only come on for about five seconds at a time. And that's when you put a heavy load on the generator. It'll actually add a couple to it so it doesn't bog it down and you don't really hear any varying in RPMs. If you can see down here, they also have water sensors. If water gets in the bottom of this pan and it contacts this connection down here, 
right there with the hole in it, it will actually turn the generator off because it doesn't want to suck water into the intake because that's not a good thing. There's also one out here. That's also a water connection because if you get water on the outside this high up in this boat, it might be time to look at the bilge. Let's see here. On this side, we got a fuel filter here. We change that during the service. All right, I'll show you how to bleed this in case of emergency here. Don't worry about that arm, it's fine. Push this button here. You actually hear the fuel pump on and off. Right above this arm that's moving around by itself because it's on. There's this little 10 millimeter. You just crack it open. Put something in there, catch that fuel. Just push the button here. You got solid fuel coming out of here. And you're good to go. You close it back up. Hold the button again for 30 seconds to a minute probably. Make sure that all that fuel, everything can get up to this pump like it's supposed to. And it should fire up. If it doesn't, it'll do it within probably one or two tries. If it doesn't, then there's something else wrong. But if you run out of fuel or you have any issues where it stops and won't start again, that's the first thing to look for is make sure you don't have any air in your system or you ran out of fuel or water in it, something like that. All right, I'm gonna service this thing and then we'll fire it up and I'll show you a few things. All right, so we're all done with our service here. I'll show you the proper startup here on this thing. You just turn it on, you gotta wait for it. A lot of people just turn the power on and they'll push the start button and nothing happens. You see it comes up, it says initializing, you gotta wait for all that to clear. It takes you know, 20 seconds maybe, something like that, for everything to set itself up so it can start by itself. Now it's all clear. All you gotta do is push the button. You don't push it a bunch of times, you don't hold it like a key switch, nothing like that. You actually literally just push it and it'll start itself up. You gotta wait for it. A lot of people think that it's like a car where you crank it right up, but it actually has to go through a start cycle, they call it, to make sure everything is good before it fires up. So let's do it. All right, you just push the button. You'll see that light. Fired right up. That's because I bled that fuel system. If you don't do that when you service these things, they're not gonna start because they they don't like air in the fuel system. All right, so you're running good. So you see in the first page, this thing has two stator windings, each at 120. You can use one or both of them in combination as 120, or you can split them like this is and use 240, which Pursuit does because they're smart. 240 is a lot more efficient than 120, so you can le use less wiring, all that kind of stuff. Then you have Hertz here, should always be around 60, that's American standard. Every other part of the world uses 50. We use 60. You can see we're at almost 3600 RPMs is where it's supposed to be all the time, so it's right at where it's supposed to be. Battery voltage here is good. We got our fuel gauge. This is the load that's on it, so if we flip on turn on your generator, you'll be able to see shit at 240. Yep. So now you turn on your engine charger or whatever you like, charger or house charger, it's on. Now you see up here, that's on line one, you're running, it's pulling about five or six amps. Nope, line two just kicked on, that's the other charger I just turned on, so. Okay, now you also have you can see it's charging. You're over 13 volts here, or right around 13. Should go over a little bit as the time goes on. So you have next screen here. This is going to give us all of our temperatures and our PSI for oil pressure, which is very important. They usually run right around there, right around 40. They get a bit less less oil pressure as they get hot. Coil's good. Cylinder head. These. The coil will run pretty hot most of the time. It'll run over 200 degrees, that's normal. If any of these 
get over a certain temperature anyways, it doesn't really matter because there's alarms for everything. Everything is monitored on this engine, so if it gets too hot or the coil doesn't do something correctly or anything like that, it's going to tell you or turn off. Next screen just shows us we have almost 250 hours, how many start cycles we got. So this thing gets started and ran quite a bit for a long time, which is good. That's the way you should run these things next screen should just take us right back. So, see, now we're charging good. We only got six amps on this one. Here's our kilowatts. All right, I'll show you starting it from the generator side real quick. So, when you first, or when you go to turn this thing off, you wanna unload it. You wanna turn everything off. Make sure this thing has no, no amps getting pulled from it. So you have zero. That way all the capacitors, everything else can get recharged and everything can be normal for when it wants to start again or when you want to use it. If you turn it off with a load on it, sometimes it'll trick the computer thinking that it's pulling a load and it'll actually cause those backup capacitors, the boost capacitors, to stay on. And that will cause your voltage to be over 240 because it doesn't know any better and your hertz run closer to 65 instead of 60. And then you have to take and replace the computer in it or you know, a capacitor or something happens. So definitely unload everything before. So this is what it looks like when she starts. That little lever moves and then she fires right up. You should see that that's going to move to increase the RPM to where it needs to be. That's how it shuts off right there. All right, we're done with this generator and we're gonna call it a day. I'll see you tomorrow. Red Giro.